the non-starters for La Jolla Country Day. Number 18, senior Lauren Swigart. Number seven, freshman Allie Hawkins. And number 11, freshman Meredith Lucas. The starting lineup for La Jolla Country Day, senior co-captain, number 10, Kenna Louie. Junior co-captain, number eight, Madison Elliott. Number nine, junior, Kimmy Claudette. Junior goalkeeper, Sarah Swigger. Number 12, Sophomore Kelly Foltz. Number two, freshman Becky Cladot. Number five, freshman Hallie Houston. Number 13, freshman Krista Liskovich. Number 14, freshman Valerie Christie. Number 24, freshman Michelle Fairman. And number 16, freshman Corey Myerson. And for Francis Parker, led by head coach Mark Peabock, and assistant coaches Kathy Dykes and Colleen Fogarty. Number two, senior defender Andrea Copley. Number four, Sophomore midfielder, Emily Ziering. Number 11, junior midfielder, Katie Svatos. Number 15, freshman midfielder, Anna smith Hinkley. Number 16, Sophomore defender, Marissa Alvarez. Number 22, junior midfielder forward, Krista Peterson. Number 23, freshman midfielder forward, Mimi Davis. Number 25, freshman forward, Liana Ching. The starters for Francis Parker. Sophomore goalkeeper, Adrian Gies. Number three, junior defender, Hannah Rosa. Number five, sophomore defender, uh, Alex Copper. Number six, senior forward co-captain, Natanya Maya. And the other co-captain, number eight, senior midfielder, Jessica Lair. Number nine, sophomore midfielder, Courtney Raines. Number 10, sophomore midfielder forward, Lauren Gerber. Number 12, 
junior defender midfielder, Candace Thieb. Number 13, junior forward, Melissa Vassilodeus. Number 18, junior midfielder forward, Kristen Korn. And number 26, freshman defender, Alden Vies. We have everyone rise for the national anthem, please. And we're just underway here in the second girls CIF Division IV semifinal match between the Lancers of Francis Parker and the Torres of La Jolla Country Day. A couple of Coastal League rivals that know each other well. These two teams finished first and second in the Coastal League this year. Parker, undefeated league champions. But they tied Country Day both times by a score of 1-1 and 2-2. And this is the rubber match. The game that will decide ultimately who will go to the CIF championship final. Parker making a bid to go to its 10th consecutive Division IV CIF final. Country Day looking to get into their first championship final ever in girls soccer. Good hard tackle there. And a clearance by the Lancers. This Lancer team in the all white Jersey shorts and socks defending the goal to our left. The Torres in the blue jerseys, shorts and socks. The visiting team tonight as they go from right to left. Candace Thame playing it forward. Looking for Melissa Vasiliadis. Flicked on and a foul called. Kimmy Claudette, number nine, the midfielder for the Torres, winning that. And a free kick coming up by Elliott. Long ball driven in. Pushed back. Valerie Christie with it in the midfield. To number 10, Kenna Louie. Back out wide and a shot on goal, saved by Adrian Giese. Giese, the Parker sweeper, all in black tonight. And she puts it up to midfield. It takes a bounce, and Krista Kern gets on the end of it. Kristen Kern. She's probably the most dangerous player up top for the Parker team. Kern, the younger sister of Kara Kern. Kara Kern, the former CIF Division IV Player of the Year, who is now playing her college soccer at Davidson. Down in South Carolina. Here's a chance. Krista Laskevich with the ball. Has it poked away from her. And Courtney Rain's unable to catch up with that. Natanya Mayo stepping between two players. 
And Vasiliadis flicks it on for Kern. Oh, and giving it away at the back. Yeah, Kern was offsides. Good call by the linesman. Candace Theme trying to pick her out early. Let's give you the lineups for both teams. Giese in goal for Parker. Hannah Rosen, Alex Copper. Alda Invice and Natanya Mayo, the back four for the Lancers. That's number five, Hallie Houston, battling in for the Torres. And she earns her team a corner kick. Lauren Gerber, Courtney Raines, Jessica Lair, and Candace Thiem in midfield for Parker with Vasiliadis and Kern up top. Corner kick now coming up for La Jolla Country Day. First dangerous opportunity really for either team. Lofted into the box, headed out, and wide. Natanya Mayo is going to watch it go wide. Louie heads it down, but only to Kern. Kern taking a run at Fairman. Kern's still on it, and she's cut off. Number, I believe that's number 12, Kelly Foltz. Yes, Foltz doing a nice job cutting that off. And out of bounds. Forward. Jessica Lair heads it up, but only as far as Foltz and Lair with it again. Vasiliadis shielding. And it's knocked for a throw in. Courtney Reigns to throw this in for the Lancers. The Lancers with eight players forward. Lair flicks it on. Gerber tries to keep it at the far side. She can't. Up the wing, but not out. And Alda Invice does a great job to keep it in play. Oh, Natanya Mayo with a little bit of skill. Flicks it forward. Runs into another tackle. Somehow Kern ended up with it. Faciliatis played it into the middle. Now Candace Theme is going to chase it down. She and Reigns on this near side. Theme still with it. Reigns somehow keeps it and stays on her feet. Mail. Theme. You can hear Coach Jenkins on the far side telling his players not to let this Parker team get in their rhythm, and he's done a great job of disrupting their rhythm all season long. The only team that Parker was unable to beat during the league season was this very La Jolla Country Day team. And they're showing themselves to be very organized at the back and very solid up front and going forward. The field is still very wet. 
on the other side of the field. In the first semifinal, there were a number of players slipping and falling. The footing seems to be much better on this near side. And you can see Melissa Vasiliadis go down right there. Now it's country day with a little bit of rhythm as they put together some passes. Kept in, somehow, still with it. Oh, poked in the middle and Giese's gonna get the rebound. Nice job. Louis the stopper, having that, that whistled against her, yes. And uh, I think the referee did a right, nice job in reversing his call there because that was clearly not a foul. Oh, and here's Geesey coming out off her line. She makes the save. Is she all right? A little shaken up there. <laughs> Reigns. And into the long jump pit she goes. And it'll be a throw-in for Parker. Yes, they're going to say that ball was off the Torres last. <laughs> Reigns to put it in. Lair in deep in the box, flicks it into the center. And Kelly Foltz clears. Themed, trying to dribble past a couple of players. Foltz still clears it. And Natanya Mayo with a shot that really wasn't on goal. I gave you the starting lineup earlier for Parker. Now let's give you the starters for La Jolla Country Day. In goal, Sarah Swigart. She's a junior. Up front, number 16, Corey Meyerson. The other forward is number nine, Kimmy Claudette. Reigns heads it down. Lair gets on it. Good combination play there at the edge of the box. Nothing comes of it though and it's cleared. Rosen keeps it in. Copper the sweeper tries to clear but it's knocked away. In midfield, number 13, Crystal Iskevich is in the center along with Hallie Houston, number five. Number eight, Madison Elliott, the left midfielder. And number 14 on the far side, Valerie Christie is the other midfielder. Foltz is the sweeper. Number 10, Kenna Louie is the stopper. And here comes Country Day the other way. Oh, and a break here. A shot from Houston from way outside. And it doesn't come to anything just yet. Long ball for Reigns again. Reigns in the corner, trying to get to it first. Michelle Fairman, the freshman, pokes it away from her. Becky Claudette is the right midfielder, excuse me, and Valerie Christie's the right back along with Fairman at the left back and Fultz and Louie. There's your back four. 
There's a chance and a shot just wide of the post by Parker. Really the first good chance for Francis Parker in this game. You can see how these two teams battled to a, a couple of draws earlier in the season. Very evenly matched. Parker asserting a little more pressure, but Country Day looking very dangerous on the break. Clever little back heel. Now Mayo. Theme loses it. Forward for Meyerson. Meyerson finds Houston. Houston. Claudette couldn't keep it up top, and Parker wins it back. Kristen Kern. And that pass, I don't know if that was intended for a theme or not, but nowhere near her. Good tackle there by Hannah Rosen. Out wide for Gerber. Her pass intercepted by number five, Houston. Parker really probing this La Jolla Country Day defense. And the Torres up to the task so far. And there's a ball all the way across. Asiliaitis can't take it down. Invice will run back and try to get it for Parker. She's got a player on her back. And whistled for the foul, yes. Meyerson doing a great job putting pressure on Invice, not letting her play the ball. And a free kick for the Torres. Houston getting on the end of it. Houston looking for a chance and sees it poked away. The Tories with a couple of good chances so far. Giese's been very quick off her line to thwart any attack. And the referee says, oh, that took a deflection. Parker ball. Coach Dave Jenkins and Noah Gins have done a fine job in turning this Loya Country Day team into a contender. Now here's a chance. Kristen Kern pokes at it and quite can't quite get the power she wanted. Valerie Christie and Kelly Fultz were all over her as Kristen Kern tried to break into the box. Invice chases it. Gerber to Rosen. And nobody really knew where that ball was. Now, Candace Thiem, nice touch for Rosen. She's got a player forward. Courtney Rains now cutting across the field. Gets it all the way over to Gerber on the far side. Vasiliadis now at the edge of the box with a shot and it's just over. Shot looking a lot more dangerous than it was. Bouncing off the football goalposts. There's no score as we're midway through the first half in this girls division four semifinal between La Jolla Country Day and Francis Parker. 
The winner of this game will move on to meet Christian High School in the CIF Championship this Saturday, March 8th. Francis Parker would like to make it back for a rematch of last year's championship. La Jolla Country Day have plans of their own, and they'd like to get to their very first CIF title match. Substitution now. Number 11, Meredith Lucas, is going to come in and replace number 9, Kimmy Claudette. Flicked on by Houston. Kern steps in front and takes it away. Now Natanya Mayo with a long run against the fresh legs just coming off the bench. And Mayo gets there somehow. Rosen uses her body well. And the ball goes all the way back to the sweeper. Copper to Mayo. Houston now up this left side from her center midfield position. Into the box she goes, crosses it. That's a great ball right to the penalty spot. And the Torres really couldn't get a shot out of that. That's too bad. Giese across midfield on a bounce. Christie knocking it up for the Torres. Now Laskevich. She plays it in the corner for Meyerson. And Meyerson wins her team a throw in. And the throw in is far up the field. Referee will instruct players to come forward. Meyerson again in the corner now. Her cross low, and Giese just gobbles it up. Lucas really wasn't close to getting on the end of that. That's a great matchup right there, shaping up between Kristen Kern and Kenna Louie. Louie, the tough stopper for this La Jolla Country Day team. Country Day playing with four, four at the back, even though Parker really only playing with two, uh, two front runners. Although both are dangerous. Houston. Looking for Becky Claudette on the far side. Gerber just shielding. Gerber looking for some help. Gerber off Claudette and gets the throw in. I don't think that's what she intended to do, but she got away with it. Now Rosen flicks it on. And Vasiliadis should get there first. She does. But Louie right there to clean up. Now it's Houston through the middle. Houston still with it. Left-footed shot. Wide of the goal, but Giese makes absolutely sure and scoops it up before it can cross the end line. Valerie Christie. Oh, and Giese and Copper at the edge of the box. Not quite sure if that ball was going to get out, and Lucas just kept coming hard. Great hustle by the youngster. Meredith Lucas, just a freshman. And, you know, we talked earlier about the Westview team that lost to Christian being a bunch of freshmen and sophomores. This La Jolla Country Day team has eight sophomores, excuse me, eight freshmen one sophomore, three juniors, and only two seniors. So most of these girls will be back next year. And challenge for a Coastal League title. Elliott, the junior co-captain, plays it out of bounds. Reigns. 
looking for Lair in the box. And Reigns will get another chance. Jessica Lair really pushing forward into the attack in this uh, offensive third of the field. She's like another forward for this Parker team. And out for a corner. So Lair forcing the corner kick. And now Parker will put five players in the box, a couple of more lurking at the edge. La Jolla Country Day going to be tested for the first time from the corner. Reigns drives it in, headed away by Houston. Oh, Candace Theme let it bounce and really lost the opportunity. Mayo tries to keep it in, can't. Houston, really a dynamo. Copper. Invice, really never saw it coming. Elliott, long ball. Geesey going to let it come into the box this time. This time she had it measured. A little bit of confusion last time, but doing a nice job. Muscovich with a little flick, but theme is right there. Louie just plugging up the middle as a good stopper should. Winning those balls in the air, intercepting those through passes, really doing a nice job, making Fultz's life a lot easier. Oh, and a bad throw, yes. Gerber on the far side, guilty of the foul throw. Louie back to clean it up. Nice job. Now going forward, looking for Meyerson. Meyerson holding her defender off. Claudette intercepted. And Jessica Lair. Oh. Rosen back to Copper. Copper playing real simple tonight, just spraying the ball around at the back. Candace Thiem unable to keep it in play. Lucas giving just enough pressure to force the turnover there. And Country Day gets a throw in. Here's Elliott. Elliott with a player in the middle of the field. Louie, but Rosen intercepts it. Asiliaitis, can she get it? She's got three defenders to take on, and she's going to try. Oh, poked away just at the last second. Fairman. And Fairman wins the throw as well. Reigns heads it forward, and she gets a deflection off Elliott, and Parker wins the throw. Well, it's a back and forth game here. Not a lot of clear cut chances for either side. Parker with a little bit more of the possession. But Country Day always looking dangerous on the counterattack. Mayo just drives it into the box. Fultz, oh, and it falls for Kern at the back post. A shot by Gerber and a goal. Lauren Gerber from her left midfield position snuck in at the back post on a deflection and stuffed it in the goal for a one to nothing Francis Parker lead. So with nearly 30 minutes gone in this semifinal, Francis Parker takes a one to nothing lead over La Jolla Country Day. We're coming to you tonight from Wilson Stadium on the campus of Escondido High School. This is the girls CIF Division IV semifinal. Country Day knocks it down in the corner. Gerber with a long run. Oh, and it's taken away. Houston turns the corner. She's got a player at the penalty spot, and she overshot it. Rosen and Thiem back to clean it up. Long ball. Couldn't be held. Houston now really pushing herself forward.
Fairman putting it back into play. Now La Jolla Country Day is going to have to chase this game a little bit. They've been content to really hit on the counterattack. Now they're going to have to come at Francis Parker a little bit more. Will Parker come forward is the question, or are they going to sit on this one nothing late? I think it's always dangerous to sit on a one nothing late. We saw what happened to Westview earlier tonight. And if you didn't see that game, Christian High School rallied from a one nothing deficit to tie it in the second half and then win it on a golden goal in the second overtime period. A cruel deflection cost Westview its first trip to the CIF Finals. Gerber back to Copper. Playing it up the wing, nobody really there. Hannah Rosen clearing it for the Lancers. And Louie right in the middle. Louie's been just in the middle of everything. In vice, heads it straight up in the air. In vice battling Elliott. Oh, now here's a chance, Houston. Oh, cuts at the edge of the box. Mmm, and just has it poked away. Still with it, though. Going to her left now. Showing some speed with the left foot. She shoots it wide. Houston working terribly hard for that shot. Corey Meyerson getting a breather on the sideline. And Houston now playing up top with Madison Elliott. Lucas has been dropped into midfield. Oh, and the referee getting in the way there. Now, Vasiliadis drops it for Rosen. Rosen forward, but gives away possession a little too easily. Well, that just got away from her. Now, here's the foot race on the other side. Kristen Kern with a lot of speed, although she's been playing a bit banged up. Can't quite get to it. Louie clears it. Valerie Christie and Kristen Kern. That should be a good matchup on that far side. There those two are. Oh, Kern trying to find Lair. Pass was behind her. Rosen, Mayo, and a chance here. Reigns on her left foot, she shoots. And to the goalkeeper, didn't get a lot of power. She was falling as she was shooting. And Swigart with a nice punt. Not quite to midfield, not the power, but certainly the accuracy as her team keeps possession. Now Invice is gonna give chase along with Lucas. Can she keep it? Yes. Elliot, all the way across. Oh, and given away by the Lancers. So the pressure continuing to come from La Jolla Country Day. And we'll have a substitution. Lucas is going to come off. Meyerson is going to replace her for Country Day and go back up front. Houston on the left side with Mayo. And Mayo knocks it out for a corner and a good chance here. The second corner kick of the game for La Jolla Country Day. So Elliott to swing this in from the near side. Dangerous ball headed. Oh, Houston had a good shot at it. Giese was right there at the same time. And La Jolla Country Day just missing a golden opportunity. And now a substitution for Frances Parker. Making her first appearance tonight is Liana Chang, number 25. She'll replace Melissa Vasiliadis. Liana. Number 25, gonna play up front with Kristen Kern. And Leanna getting her first touch and getting her first whack. <laughs> Knocked down as she takes off down this near touch line. 
Ching putting pressure on Foltz. Just enough. Foltz gets it out. Laskevich. There's Gerber, the goal scorer. And Mayo. Mayo gets lost by Houston. Houston doing a great job. She's got Meyerson in the middle and runs by Invice. It's two versus one. If she can make this pass, and she does. Onsides, Meyerson, Invice can't get the shot off. And a goal. Is that Laskavich? I think it was. Well, a, a perfect opportunity for the country day that almost went all wrong. And number 13, Crystal Laskavich came in and poked it in. So we're all tied at one with less than five minutes to go before the half. La Jolla Country Day has made this a brand new ball game. <laughs> Credit Houston for doing all that work down the right side. And she slipped it in the middle for Meyerson. And Meyerson, I thought, had an empty net and an easy chance. And somehow she didn't get the shot off. And as Invice came back and poked it away from Meyerson, Laskevich was there to stuff it in at the far post. Alex Copper was left two on one, really three on one there at the end. And had no chance to help Giese, the goalkeeper. Jessica Lair winning it back for Parker. Kristen Kern now battling through a couple of tackles. She plays Reigns into the corner. Reigns' cross really goes awry. Elliott to take this goal kick. Well, rain slips and falls down. You can see this field is still very wet. Rains to throw it in for Parker. She's got a player deep down this side. It's Kern who can't control it. And Laskevich looking for Houston has it knocked away. Knock back down for Rains. Laskevich with the left foot, plays it forward. And Copper almost gave that away. Rosen into the corner for Kern. Kern steps around the defender. Her cross, oh, just missing the near post. It really wasn't a shot. I think it was a cross ball that was mishit. You can see how treacherous it is as the players try to negotiate around that long jump pit there. I, I really can't believe that CIF is holding a CIF semifinal at a facility like this. I mean, it's a beautiful track, it's a nice stadium, but the field is not in good condition. And with the track being here, it's really dangerous with those, those long jump pits. You've got a concrete curb that is about six inches from the touch line, and that's got to be dangerous for players on both teams. Well, the scoreboard clock has been turned off. There can't be much time remaining. We're coming right to the end of the first half. Here's a push in the back. Elliot, the co-captain. Candace Thiem heads it straight up in the air and, and dangerous play. And a free kick for the Lancers. Theme will take this. She finds Rosen. Lair back to Rosen a little long. And Gerber ends up with it. And it falls to Hallie Houston. Houston, one of the many freshmen on this team. I said there were eight. Flicked on. And all the way across the field. Here's Candace Thiem with it. Straight up in the air. <laughs> A great bit of head juggling there. I'm not sure that's what she intended, but Fairman did a nice job to thwart the attack. Miskevich clears it, 
but only briefly. Back in. Fultz now heads it straight up and out. And Fairman clears it finally. And a handball. I think Corey Meyerson thought she might have been pushed. Now Thiem going to drive this into the box. And that's the end of the first half. So our score at halftime, Francis Parker won. La Jolla Country Day 1 in the girls. CIF Division 4 Soccer Semifinals. We'll be back with second half action right after this break. And we're back for the second half of the girls' Division Four CIF semifinal between La Jolla Country Day and Francis Parker. We're all tied at one with 40 minutes left to go. Or at least 40 minutes left to go. The other semifinal, of course, went overtime tonight. The teams played almost 30 minutes of overtime before that game was decided. Christian High School won. They'll be going on to the CIF championship. And they'll meet the winner of this game. Invice knocks it long. Both teams come out flying to start the second half. A flurry of action. Rosen. All the way across for Reigns. She heads it up. Kern's going to try to get on the end of it in the box. Reigns shot goes way wide and we'll have a goal kick. Well, Michelle Fairman's back up, and she's okay. Just a little shaken up on that play. And Elliott to take the goal kick. Elliott coming all the way back from her midfield position to take these goal kicks. And La Jolla Country Day tries to come forward. Long ball over the top. Hannah Rosen. Team, mm, without really looking, tried to play that ball across the field, and she was better off taking an extra touch. Now, Haley Houston wins her team a free kick, and it's Elliott again. No surprise here. Let's see what she does with this. The Parker girls holding their line at the edge of the 18-yard box, floated up and over the top. Geesey on a bounce, takes it easily. Geesey. Recognizing the opportunity, plays out quickly to Reigns. Kern dumps it in the middle. Fultz heads it away. Country Day doing a nice job playing out of the back on the ground. Elliott can't quite control it, though. Miskevich wins it. Louie flicks it forward. Invice over the top. Kern holding on. Lair. Lair's influence really seemed to lessen as the first half went on. Now here's Houston bursting into the box. Houston sliding into the far post, just missing. Oh, Hallie Houston with a perfect opportunity to put La Jolla Country Day in the driver's seat. And the ball rolls agonizingly wide of the post. This Country Day team has looked so dangerous all night on the counterattack. They absorb the pressure and they hit you back hard. And Houston's got great speed, as does Meyerson. They're both just freshmen. Copper heads it away. I think she was fouled in the process, but play on, says the referee. Gerber, up front. 
Natanya Mayo is now pushed forward, and she's got herself into the attack. She's playing more of a midfield role, maybe even as a third forward. Let's see what they do with her. Yep, they're pushing her really forward. Frances Parker playing with three at the back, four in midfield, and three up top now as they really try to put some pressure on. Good battle there. Louie comes out with it. Ken and Louie, the co-captain. But Rosen takes it back. Lair with all kinds of space. Uncorks one, and it's deflected. Now Reigns with a chance. Her cross deflected. Fultz heads it, and it'll be out for a throw-in. Boy, end-to-end -end action. Country Day just missing on an opportunity at the other end of the field, and now Francis Parker roars back down to this end. So a throw-in on the far side. Courtney Reigns. Candace theme can't get on the end of it. Rosen. And it's headed away by Houston, and another throw-in coming up for Francis Parker. Francis Parker, the defending CIF champions. They've won four of the last nine Division IV titles. They've been to nine straight title games, trying to make it ten in a row. Mark Tebach has done an excellent job with this program. I mentioned Francis Parker head coach Mark Tebach in his fifth year. His assistants, Kathy Dykes and Colleen Fogarty, on the bench helping him tonight. Let's mention some of the players for Parker that uh, we haven't seen yet. We saw Leanna Ching, but there's uh, Mimi Davis, number 23, Krista Peterson, number 22, Marissa Alvarez, number 16, Katie Svetos, number 11, Emily Ziering, number 4, and Andrea Coppola, number 2. On the bench and at and at Francis Parker's disposal. And a uh, whistle here in a stoppage of play. Elliott knocking the ball back and the Francis Parker players not appreciating that. Now, theme with it. Turns. Claudette tackles it away from her. Gerber. Flicked in by Lair. Now Fultz is going to get a chance to clear it. Lair, oh, I think she'd like to have that one back. Theme collects it, runs into the other Claudette. It's not fair. They've got two Claudette sisters in the midfield here for La Jolla Country Day. Now Mayo can't get on the end of it. And that's number two, Becky Claudette. Not to be confused with her sister, Kimmy, number nine. And all the way across for Reigns. Flicked in the air for Lair. Lair still with it. And a volley and up and over. Goal kick for the Torres. Becky clawed at. Invice just clears it. And Sister Kimmy Claudette chases it down. Meyerson. And they're going to say that ball was out of bounds. Meyerson frustrated. No, she could have done better with it. Just a freshman, though. Very talented. Lots of speed. This La Jolla Country Day team, I am very impressed with. I think they're going to be a quality team in the Coastal League for the next few years. I want to correct myself from a uh, comment earlier. Natanya Mayo playing up top, not with three forwards uh, for this Parker team, but uh, Kristen Kern is sitting on the bench right now. She's been injured a good part of this year, and actually, no, Kristen Kern is back in the back now. Boy, they've, she switched places with Mayo, so I thought they'd sat her down, but... 
Coach Mark Tebach really changing things up. He's put Kern, arguably his best forward, back on Houston to control her. Yeah, he must think that uh, his other players can do the job offensively. Laskevich running at the defense now. Copper forces her to her left foot, shoots it. Not on target. Crystal Laskevich with a nice run, though, into the penalty area. So it's Mayo and Vasiliadis playing up top. With Thiem, Gerber, Lair, and Reigns in the midfield. Copper, Rosen, Invice, and Kern in the back for Francis Parker. And for Country Day, it's still Meyerson and Houston up top. Laskevich, Claudette, Claudette, Becky and Kimmy, and Elliott in the midfield for Country Day, the back four. Christie, Foltz, Louie, and Fireman. That ball took a deflection coming out. I think that uh, probably should have been Loya Country Day's ball. Good tackle there. Hannah Rosen playing it into the corner and trying to reverse the field. Couldn't do it. Neither team's attack is very free-flowing at this point. It's a bit of a disjointed game. Francis Parker trying to put together a little bit of possession. Loyal Country Day looking like they, they want to hit back on the counterattack when they can, but... Long ball into the edge of the penalty area. Can Copper get there, beat Houston? Yes, she can. Elliott can't keep it, and Francis Parker takes over. So a lot of throw-ins, a lot of changeover in possession. Neither team really able to assert themselves, and you would expect that from two teams that tied twice already this year. They've played three times now. Both teams have scored four goals over those three games, and we still don't have a winner. But we're going to have to have one eventually tonight. We're either going to have an overtime winner or, like we saw in the first semifinal, or we're going to go to kicks from the mark. Fultz retrieves, Fairman. Now here's Mayo turning and looking at the defense. She plays it wide for Lair. Back for Kern. Kern's pass probing forward in the defense, but really not aimed towards anyone. Now Lair plays it on the ground. Good bit of tackling there. Mayo and Louie just going at it. At the edge of the box, Louie winning both times. Kern and Houston, there's a good battle as well shaping up. Kristen Kern, the powerful forward turn defender, marking Hallie Houston. Neither coach looking to his bench right now. A couple of players warming up, but really nothing changing. Invice knocks it down. Kern slips but gets to it. Kimmy Claudette loses it. 
And Jeskalaire running on. Jeskalaire just knocking it forward to the goalkeeper. And Sarah Swigart just really hasn't had much to do tonight. She hasn't been challenged much. Hasn't had to make any real big saves. Rosen playing it square. Kern pushing it forward but gives it away. And dangerous play. The referee almost let play go there because certainly Kern would have had the advantage had she been able to keep possession and continue to play. But once she stopped, he had no choice but to blow the whistle. Rosen driving it in. Theme with a little flick on. Asiliitis in the box now. Oh, tries to cut inside and can't. Oh. And Kimmy Claudette falling to her knees. And that's the dangerous part I was telling you about. You can see how wet it is down in the corner, how chewed up it is. And then right there is that long jump pit with those concrete curbs. And, and I, you know, it's just an accident waiting to happen. And, and I hope that none of these players get hurt. It would be a shame. Madison Elliott. Parker wins it and tries to put together a little bit of possession here and just instead chasing the loose ball most of the time. How Becky Claudette wins it back. Invice. Little deflection. And straight out of bounds by Meyerson. Now Meyerson doesn't lack for enthusiasm or hustle. Always working hard up front for this La Jolla Country Day team. Francis Parker. As I mentioned, the defending CIF champions. A number of these players played on last year's title team. And they're looking for an opportunity to get back to the finals. But La Jolla Country Day has different ideas. They have not been awed by this Francis Parker team at all this year. Played them to a pair of ties during the league season. Candace Thiem wiggles out from that tackle. Meyerson and Invice. Oh, and Copper hits it straight up in the air. And Rosen. Finally able to clear up. Meyerson just putting on all kinds of pressure. Meyerson and Houston have a lot of speed. And they, they're constantly causing problems for this back four of Francis Parker. Flicked on by Gerber. It was a flick on at the far post earlier that allowed Gerber to score the go-ahead goal as Francis Parker took a one to nothing lead in the first half. But it's this young lady here, Hallie Houston, who's been the difference as she goes forward again in search of goal number two for the Torres. It was her long run that ended up with a loose ball for Krista Liskevich to stuff into the goal for the tying goal. Now Fultz heads it clear. Christie up the line. Jessica Lair settling things down for Francis Parker. Hannah Rosen surging forward still. She's got Gerber, oh, and she just played it too long. And she holds her head because she knows she should have done better. And a substitution. Number 11, Meredith Lucas is going to come back in and replace Meyerson. So one freshman for another.
And Liana Ching warming up for Francis Parker, so we could have a substitution here in a minute for the Lancers as well. Headed up. Lucas with her first touch. And Lucas providing the same spark for the Torres that Meyerson did. Hard running, hard tackling, putting the Parker defense under pressure and forcing turnovers just like that. Now here's Kristen Kern trying to go forward. Houston all over her, will not let her turn. And drawing a cheer from the Country Day faithful. There aren't more than a couple of dozen of them on the far side, but they've braved the cold here. It's a chilly Escondido evening. We're at Wilson Stadium on the campus of Escondido High School. I'm Jeff Scott. You're watching a George Langevin video production. This is the CIF Division IV Girls Soccer Semifinal. The winner here goes on to the title game Saturday to meet Christian High School. The Patriots won the first semifinal tonight, defeating Westview from Rancho Penasquitos. Westview High School, the brand new high school in the Powell Unified School District, competing with only freshmen and sophomores this season, which is why they're in Division Four. They just don't have that many kids. They will next year when they add another class. And a substitution. Here it is. Leanna Ching is going to replace Natanya Mail. Ching's going to go up front. We saw her in the first half up there. Mayo, a little bit frustrated, holding her wrist. Looks like she might have been a little bit dinged up out there. Let's see. Let's hope she's okay. Ching tries to cross it. And it's poked out of bounds. And it looks like Courtney Raines is going to come across the field and take this. No, a quick throw in. That's not what Coach t wanted to have happen. <laughs> but it, nonetheless, and now Parker's got nine players in and around the penalty area. There's the ball flicked up in the air, and Swigard comes out and gets it. Francis Parker with nine players forward. Loy Country Day defending with 11. And now the field opens up again. Ooh, Copper hits it right in to Lucas. And here goes Houston on the far side. Houston with great speed. Can she get away from Kern? Oh, Kern slips and falls down. And Giese will come out and handle this. Boy, Giese waited just a little bit. You can see how the field is still slippery and still affecting players. I would have thought it would have dried out. As the night went on tonight, it certainly was slippery in the first semifinal. In fact, the wet field may have contributed to Westview's go-ahead goal in the first semifinal, but here we're all even at one. Less than 20 minutes to go in the second half. And is that Houston down on the far side? Yes, she is. And she's holding her leg, her knee. The referee's going to stop play. Let's hope she's okay. So it looks like Hallie Houston is okay after being shaken up on the far side. And, and there's that treacherous field I told you about. Meyerson replaces her. Madison Elliott to take the free kick. Long ball. Lair with it. Finds Ching.
And Gerber cleaning it up for Parker finally. And Vasiliadis lets it go out of bounds because she'll have the throw in. And there's a snap header by Ching and it goes wide. Boy, Candace Thiem flicked that ball on for Liana Ching and uh, Ching with a nice job to get it towards goal. And Lucas steps off, and Hallie Houston comes back on for La Jolla Country Day and nearly gets the ball right away. And down she goes again. You know, this field, I, I don't want to harp on it, but it is dangerous. There's not a lot of grass down the middle. In front of both coaching benches, you can see where the grass is worn from football season and never has been repaired. And that coupled with the... Long jump pits on either side. Really, I think CIF has to think about that. Now, Ching with the ball in the middle. Vasiliadis up and over. Well, Leanna Ching has really started to contribute now for Francis Parker up front. She didn't make much of an impact in the first half of this game, but she's starting to come on now. Shot on goal a minute ago, or a shot towards goal, I should say, and then a dangerous cross to give Vasiliadis a chance. Madison Elliott gonna size up this goal kick. Francis Parker really trying to keep Country Day pinned in their own end. A lot of pressure on them to win the first ball. Oh, and the ball goes over Rosen's head and Gerber back. Gerber as it poked away from her. In vice, just knocks it straight out. And a good chance. Claudette. Oh, an invite again, out of bounds. Kenny Claudette to throw it in for the Torres. She's got a player in a corner. Houston. Meyerson with a little bit of a nudge there to shake her defender. And finally clear, but not out. And a shot from way out that Giese can handle it easily. Boy, Madison Elliott let rip with one from about 30 yards. And it was surprisingly accurate. There's a shove into midfield. Laskevich doesn't like the call, but Lair earns her team a free kick. Now it's Theme. Still going forward. Theme and Rosen. Reigns dances around one defender. Now she can get the cross in. Dangerous spot. Gerber again. Oh, she could have had her second goal of the game, and she couldn't keep it under the crossbar. Oh, my. Great work, though, by Courtney Reigns on the far side as she drives that ball through the box. Hunter Rosen has really stepped up now into the midfield. She started off. Looked like a, in the stopper position there defensive center mid, but she's really moved up and she along with Candace Thiem playing side by side behind Lair give Francis Parker a real potent attack on a midfield. Now Lair latches onto one with her left foot. She'll have a go from 20 yards out and the ball stays in play. Good save by Swigart. And there's a little nudge in the back and a free kick for La Jolla Country Day. About 12 minutes left to play in regulation time. We're all tied at one. These are the CIF semifinals for Girls Soccer Division 4. I'm Jeff Scott. You're watching a George Langevin video production from Escondido High School. Long ball. Oh, and a chance. Vasiliadis can't quite get there. Foltz let that go, and I don't think uh, she'd do it again if she had the opportunity. Lair winning the header. 
Reigns getting the second one. Rosen and Thiem really starting to assert themselves in the middle of the field. And just as I said that, Kimmy Claudette. Oh, and a hard tackle. Good hard tackling there by Meyerson and Kristen Kern. Now Candace Thiem running at the defense. Rosen cuts back. She's got Gerber. Gerber in the corner. Gerber tries to cross it. And Houston clears. Houston's having to go farther and farther back into midfield to help out. It really hurts this Country Day attack. There's a ball into the corner. Copper over to cut it off. And Country Day looking to get themselves forward. They haven't created much in this second half, but a couple of dangerous chances. Madison Elliott's long shot. Really the best chance that they've had. But to their credit, they haven't given up many chances either. Francis Parker may have had the ball a bit more. And certainly they've played in the Tory's penalty area a lot more, but still all locked up at one. Country Day showing to be a very good defensive team with a bunch of freshmen. The youngsters really acquitting themselves well tonight. There's Meyerson. Her cross is blocked, and they'll have a dangerous throw, and this about 10 yards from the corner flag. So a chance for Country Day here. Can they capitalize? Kimmy Claudette. Really the only player in a box for Loya Country Day. They've got to get some players in the box. And that ball was just too easy for Francis Parker to win and clear. Oh, and another slip. And this field is just treacherous for both teams over there. There's a cross. And Giese watches it fly by. Adrian Giese really untroubled by that cross. And partly because there were no country day players in the box to challenge. I think Coach Jenkins would like to see more players getting forward on these chances. And there's a foul. And yeah, Rosen undercut Meyerson. That's a good call. Rosen doesn't like it, but that's the right call. You've got to go up and challenge for the ball. And if you don't, you can't impede the player that is jumping up to challenge for that ball. Elliott from long range. And Thiem knocks it down. And Lair tries to find Vasiliadis and can't. They really miss Kristen Kern up front and her hard running. She covered so much more field than any of the other forwards currently for Francis Parker. But Houston caused so many problems. Now, a, uh, a change? Yes. Leanna Ching is going to come back off. Natanya Mayo is going to go on. Natanya Mayo, a bit more speed and athleticism, a little bit bigger, stronger player up front for the Lancers. Let's see if she can cause problems. Handball, it looked like. And it'll be La Jolla Country Day's ball. Kimmy Claudette. Houston committing the foul. Rosen taking the free kick. Six players forward for Francis Parker. Flicked on. We've seen a lot of that from the Parker attackers today and midfielders, but not a lot of real quality possession. And Michelle Fairman knocks that ball straight out of bounds and groans because she knows she could have done better, had a lot more time. Gerber to throw it in. Gerber going to be brought all the way up the field. Flicked into the middle. Alex Copper coming up from her sweeper position. Content to just play it out of bounds. Meyerson 
with a play on her back. It's in vice, and she just plays it back through her sweeper. Very cleanly out of the back, and another little flick, and I don't think Coach Mark Tebach <laughs> intended that little flick on to be his most dangerous uh, weapon of the day. Now there's a player that stepped on the ball and ah, could have been dangerous with players getting hurt. Fortunately, nobody got hurt. Becky Claudette got her foot caught on top of the ball and she and Rosen went down in a tumble. Reigns looking forward. She's got a long throw and Mayo gets it. Houston coming all the way back. Meyerson really the only player up there. I mean, they've got nobody to, to hit if they don't hit Meyerson. Houston holding it up in midfield. Houston looking. Oh, she's got two players running on this side. Now Country Day with three players forward a chance if they can keep going. Reigns keeps it in. Nice work. Good header one there by Becky Claudette. Meyerson. She gets it. Hard work. But Kristen Kern is there to intercept. Her pass to Houston. Just back and forth. A lot of just kicking the ball right now. This game has turned ugly. I don't think either coach is terribly happy with the quality of play, but that's what happens when you get into a tough semifinal match where it's winner take all. There will be no tie. This is going to have a winner, whether it's overtime or penalty kicks. And with so much at stake for both of these teams, Francis Parker trying to get back to the CIF championship final for the 10th straight year. Houston running at the defense again. Oh, and has it nicked away from her. Lair with a player on her back. Up the line, Vasiliadis. Oh, she gave it away. And can she go get it back? Foltz now with it. Foltz just plays it out. La Jolla Country Day looking for its first trip ever to the CIF Finals. And what a, what a big win this would be for their program. Coach Jenkins with just a couple of minutes left in regulation, hoping that he can get one more. Parker's got seven players forward now, eight players forward now, only three back. Here's a ball straight up in the air. Another throw, and Courtney Reigns to take this throw for Francis Parker. Reigns into the box for Lair. Lair's header, knocked down. Oh, and here's a chance. Houston. Oh, and Candace Theme showing great speed and hustle. Gets back and wins the tackle. Nice job. And she still has it. Mm. Mayo holding it up. Gerber running on the far side. Gerber's changed sides. Oh, and a handball. Yes, that ball came up and just bit her in the arm. It was a case really where she didn't handle it so much as the ball flew to her arm, but nonetheless, the whistle's blown and Now Gerber and Reigns have switched back. Rosen knocking it forward. Country Day just content to knock it out of bounds. The stadium clock has been turned off. We're inside of two minutes. There can't be much time. Maybe a little bit of added time on for the Houston injury. Both goals were in the first half. Not a lot of substitutions, so. And sure enough, there is the whistle. So the end of regulation. La Jolla Country Day 1, Francis Parker 1. We'll be back with the first 15-minute golden goal overtime period.
You're watching the CIF semifinals, Girls Division 4. set here to start the first overtime period. It'll be 15 minutes, golden goal. That means the first team that scores the goal wins the game. And what have we got? A free kick for the Lancers. Well, you'd think that maybe experience would count for something, as Francis Parker has certainly been in a bunch of these games before. And the players might have an edge there. But with all the freshmen at La Jolla Country Day, I don't think that uh, they know that they don't have as much experience. And I think with the vitality, the energy, and the passion that these young Country Day players are playing with, I, I think they're going to hang right into the last minute. Just my observation. They'll play two 15-minute overtime periods. If there are no goals scored in those 15-minute overtime periods, we will go to kicks from the mark. Penalty kicks, as most of you know them. Candace Thame weaving her way through the defense. Boy, she in the second half has really taken on a more aggressive stance, taking defenders on, beating them into the box. Gerber flicks it on. Another little flick up and over. In vice, and Copper just plays it off the forward. That's got to hurt Meyerson holding her wrist just a little bit. Boy, I tell you, Meyerson has run hard tonight, though. She's really done her team proud. Leskevich, nice long throw. Oh, theme with a great turn. Now, Lair, that's the player they need to get the ball to a little more often. She really makes them go in the middle of the field. Now, here it is. Oh, the ball just skips off the back of one player. Kern heads it back in. Reigns tries to get to it. Can she? Yes, she can. Tried to turn the corner. Couldn't get around, though. Houston and Rosen. And Houston goes down again in the mud. She slips. Boy, you, you hope a player like her doesn't get hurt on a field like this. She is really a talent. So throwing it in on the far side, Courtney Rains. There's Louie putting her head on. We haven't called her name much. She really hasn't had to do much here in the second half. Frances Parker really unable to put together any sort of attack down the middle of the field. Maybe Kenna Louie discouraged him in the first half with the way she played because she played so hard. Another Parker throw, and this has been a ugly game in terms of balls out of bounds. I haven't seen this many throw-ins in a game in a long, long time. Now Meyerson dances back out to midfield. She's the only La Jolla Country Day player not within 20 yards of her own goal. And a goal kick. Rosen, first of the ball there. Played back. Oh, a mix up. Reigns driving it across the field. Swigard gets it easily, though. I think Reigns had a little more time there if she would have taken it. Reigns collecting, taking her time. 
She's got Vasiliadis up the wing, but Country Day just wins it back. And you can really see that Loya Country Day is looking for that one ball, that ball they can knock through over the top and beat the defense. All it takes in overtime is a half a chance. Meyerson still running hard, still tackling hard, putting out maximum effort up front. This young ninth grader has really played a whale of a game tonight. Copper. Jessica Lair helps it forward. Can't seem to find it though. Houston now running. Cuts inside of Kern. Plays it across. There's Laskevich. Oh, she can't get on the end of it and Gerber cleans it up. Well, those are your two goal scorers tonight. Laskevich and Gerber. Oh, Mayo. Trying to take a player on. Lost it. And here comes Country Day on the attack again. Now Laskevich. Oh, chipped into the box. Geesey's going to get to this, though. That ball really needed to be driven. So the Country Day attackers had a chance to get on the end of it. Claudette. Gerber. In vice. Straight up in the air, and Geesey ought to be able to get to this easily. She does. A good punt. Now Becky clawed out with a chance. Oh, nice bit of skill there, and she leaves Jessica Lair on the ground. Intercepted, though, by Kern. Theme. And out of bounds. Gerber unable to get to it. And a substitution. Madison Elliott's going to come off, and they're going to put an extra forward on. Well, this is the first real strong move we've seen from La Jolla Country Day. It says, we're going to go forward, we're going to score a goal, we're going to win this darn thing. Lucas, number 11, an out-and-out -out forward, comes on and replaces Elliott, the midfielder. Although Houston looks like she's dropped a little bit into midfield in this second half and really not playing up front like she was earlier. Now there's a ball for Natanya Mayo across the field. And knocked out of bounds by Fairman. Looks like Zeering warming up for Francis Parker. Five minutes left to go here in this first golden goal overtime period. Gerber getting ahead to it. Ball just ricocheting in midfield like it has most of the night. Good composure. Fultz playing it out to Christie. Rosen. To Lair. And now the substitution will be made. Emily Zeering is going to come on and she's going to replace Melissa Vasiliadis. Vasiliadis gave Frances Parker all she had tonight. She ran hard up front. She held the ball. 
challenge for every ball in the air. You can't ask for much more from your forwards. She just didn't have a whole lot of support and a whole lot of service. Now Ziering looks like she's going to play in midfield. And is Lair going to play up top or is Candace Thiem going to play up top? Geesey's going to come out and get this. Candace Thiem is going to go up front. Yeah. Thiem has been much more active as an attacker in this second half. It makes sense that Coach Tebach would push him forward. The question of the day is, when is Kristen Kern going to go forward? Or is she going to stay at the back? And Mark Houston. Uh, theme waited for the ball, and it never arrived. Now here's Ziering, switching fields quickly. Rosen, no, that's Kern to clean it up to Rosen. The two players out here wide, and they can't seem to find the open player. There it is, all the way across for Gerber. Gerber, her pass, blocked, and Ziering, knocking it hopefully towards goal. Really nowhere close. Schweigart will take this, or will she? Foltz, Christie. Lucas can't keep it, but forces the throw in. Three minutes, three and a half maybe, left to go in this overtime period. This is the first of two 15 minute golden goal overtime periods. At the end of the first 15 minutes, the teams will immediately switch sides. There's no time in between. Coaches have had all the time they have to say what they have to say, and now it's up to the players. Invice doing a nice job of getting forward. Now is Theme gonna take players on? Looks like she is a little bit. Nice give and go there. Two Parker players. Mayo lays it outside for Reigns. Oh just unable to connect. Parker attack has been so disjointed. And I mentioned it earlier. Country Day has done a marvelous job of getting Francis Parker out of their rhythm. Keeping them from stringing together passes, keeping them from putting any sustained pressure on the Country Day goal. Now Lair, one on one in the corner, she chips it in towards the 18, and it's given away. And too many balls just given away cheaply by this Francis Parker team. Now here's a foot race. Meyerson, hustling all the way. Rosen up and over the top. Houston clearly playing in midfield now, really not up front at all. Mm. The stadium clock is off, and another poor throw in. So less than a minute to go here. One to one, Francis Parker, La Jolla Country Day in the girls division four semifinals. Hannah Rosen getting to that ball first. Meyerson trying to find Houston. Reigns gets there. Kern. Parker with some numbers if they can connect the pass or two, but they really can't. 
And credit this La Jolla Country Day defense for just getting to every loose ball, chasing down every opportunity. And on this slip, slippery, wet field here, now here's a chance, it's three on three. Houston with Invice. That's not the matchup that Parker wants, but it's a good matchup for Country Day. Copper is going to get there, though, and she clears it. Only as far as Meyerson, though. Meyerson about 30 yards out, getting a good look at the goal. And Giese really in command of her box. And Giese has been the more busy of the two goalkeepers here in overtime. No goals. It's still 1-1. We head into the second golden goal overtime. Francis Parker and La Jolla Country Day all tied up. So the second Golden Goal Overtime here in the Girls Division 4 CIF semifinals is about to start. This Division 4 semifinal between Francis Parker and La Jolla Country Day, a rematch. These two teams playing twice to a tie already this season. 1-1 and 2-2 in the Coastal League. And now they're all tied at 1 entering the second overtime period of the CIF playoffs. How appropriate. Two teams that have been dead even on the field all year long, now vying for a chance to go to the CIF finals. A very good Christian high Patriot team will be waiting for the winner of this game. And we get started. Francis Parker still trying to come forward here. Foltz breaking up that attack. Knocking it out wide. Parker still seemed to be pressing the attack forward. Rosen. She's been dominant in the middle so far for Parker. Oh, there's a break. Candace Thiem with the ball. Mm, had it poked away. Houston now. Her pass intercepted. Rosen, nice bit of skill. Look at that. Thiem, can she keep it? No, and she'll knock it out for a goal kick. Well, Candace Thiem has played very hard today. Playing in the center of midfield early on. Now she's playing up front. Really being used as a target forward by Coach Tebach. 13 and a half minutes to play. And if no goal, we'll take shots from the penalty spot. Here's a chance. Jessica Lair racing in. Mayo lays it back. Theme with her drive from the edge of the box, and it goes wide. And you can see the frustration on this Parker team as they drive forward in search of the go-ahead goal. Madison Elliott all the way back. She was up front just a moment ago. And a swing and a miss by Hannah Rosen. She'll lay it back for Copper, and Copper drives it over the top. Is there a ball that Kenna Louie hasn't won in the air that she's had a chance to? I mean, she's just been marvelous in the central defense for this La Jolla Country Day team. What a great, great effort. This has been a well-played game defensively. Neither team, though, has really been able to generate much of an attack, and now a substitution. Madison Elliott, the co-captain, going off. 
Corey Meyerson, the young freshman forward returning. Meyerson has been so dangerous all night, it's only fitting that she come back in and finish off this game. There's a cross. Oh, knocked down. Not out. Mayo straight up in the air. Laskevich wins it. Meyerson, she's got some wheels. She got a little bit of a rest. Mm. Boy, she'd like to have that one back, though. All night, it's been pretty much the same thing. Francis Parker trying to go forward. Loya Country Day hitting back on the counter whenever they can. Kristen Kern finds Jessica Lair. There's some, a lot of players with feet up high, but the referee lets play go on, and Foltz comes and cuts it out. Mayo. Looking for Lair, finds her, tries to go back, finds her, uh, doesn't. Chested down by Rosen, nicely done. Theme, she's got Mayo at the far post, if she can get it there. Laskevich, Rosen chasing her down. Both these teams are tired. Houston, really just get a, a toe poke out to the ball. One of the things that happens when players get tired is your skill level drops. You just don't have the touch anymore. These ladies have been playing for over a hundred minutes now and we're still tied at one. And Francis Parker really, this is their second overtime game in a row in the quarterfinals. There's Zeering with a shot with a left foot, and it goes wide. Parker finally winning that game in penalty kicks against Santa Fe Christian. So another long night for Mark T. Box Lancers. The defending CIF champs getting shown no respect by any of their Coastal League brethren. Or should I say sisters in, that, in the case of... Uh, the girls' soccer. Here's Zeering now. Zeering beats one player. In vice, though. Theme running out of room and just chipping it into the box. And not much there. And Mark Tebach looks like he's getting ready to make one last substitution here in overtime. Eight and a half minutes. Somebody's gonna have to come up with something, otherwise this is gonna go to penalties and nobody likes to lose in penalties. And a substitution here. Natanya Mayo is going to come off. And uh, Melissa Vasiliadis is going to go back on. So Mayo been running hard. And now Vasiliadis is going to come in and give it a chance herself. Reigns cross. Gerber at the far side. Oh, and just over the top. Both she and Claudette couldn't climb the ladder and reach that. Every La Jolla Country Day player on their own side of midfield. Nobody even as far up the field as the center circle. Francis Parker trying to put some pressure on here. Country Day trying to survive. Straight up in the air. Referee nearly gets hit again. And Copper. She's just going to play first time. No chances. You don't want to make any mistakes here in in the overtime period. Better safe than sorry is the probably the best way that I can put it that 
This is the tactic most coaches are going to use. Now Kristen Kern turns. Nice job. Like to see her get forward here as this game comes to an end. Asiliadis, can she keep it? Boy, she does. And a great ball back to Fultz. It's poked away. Fultz still coming. Nice job. Fultz the sweeper pushing forward. She might be the only one with fresh legs on that La Jolla Country Day team, and they might need her to get into the attack. Now a throw in for the Torres. So a throw in at midfield. Really the first time Country Day's been across midfield in this second overtime period. And here she is, Hallie Houston, bursting down the right side. Her cross headed away. Laskevich with it. A half volley, and Giese gobbles it up. Well, it was the only chance so far, but the best chance either team has had in this second overtime period. And guess who? Kenna Louie winning it again. Meyerson. Well, she tried to connect, couldn't. Gerber. And a foul, yes. Gerber was run over from behind. And a little slow to get up. Looks like she'd be okay, though. I think her pride's hurt more than her body. Candace Theme collects. Plays it forward for Lair. Lair now playing really in the attack. And a giveaway and a chance. Courtney Reigns, oh! She had a player going the other way and tried to force it into Vasiliadis. Jessica Lair heading it wide for Gerber. Gerber lays it back. Now chipped into the box. And Copper's just going to take her time and play it wide. First time ball. Oh! Invice. That was a scary ball. Copper now clears it. And Gerber does get there eventually. Candace Thiem. Nice bit of dribbling. She's got Vasiliadis there. Can she hold it? No. Jessica Lair playing it for Zeering. Gerber, edge of the penalty area. Fultz cleans it up nicely. Fultz is showing us those fresh legs. Out to Meyerson. Meyerson chests it down and turns. She's got Laskevich here. Can she get it to her? Into the space. And Giese gets to it long before Houston can run it down. Zeering, shielding nicely. Rosen, oh, gives it away at midfield. That's a tough spot. Country Gay gives it right back. Now Vasiliadis on the left side. Let's see if she takes somebody on here. That's a good idea. I mean, late in the game, that's what you'd want your forwards to do. And oh, and that went a lot closer to the goal than any of us thought. Vasiliadis shooting the ball just wide of the far post. Didn't miss by more than a foot and a goal kick coming up. You can see players stretching. You can see there's only a couple of minutes left. We're inside of three minutes to play, according to the stadium clock, here in the second overtime period. And Country Day, I think, would be happy to get to penalties at this point. And Francis Parker would have to be disappointed. But it's not over. Meyerson with a burst. And there's Kern. Copper clears. Another ball up and over the top. Is Meyerson going to get to this? No. Boy, Alex Copper has just been money at the back for Frances Parker tonight. The only goal that was scored is when she was left two on one by the rest of her defense. Now Country Day with a little bit in. Oh, we've got another player down. Who is it? It's Meyerson this time. And... I think Meyerson got stepped on. Hard to say. Perhaps just a cramp. Players on both teams at this point have got to be exhausted. So we restart play from an indirect free kick for Francis Parker. 
The injury to Meyerson, not that bad, evidently. Over the top for Reigns, a little bit too far. Madison Elliott is back on for the Torres. The scoreboard clock has been turned off, and we've got to be inside of two minutes now, and not much left. Can Parker put together one last attack? Can Country Day put together an attack? And at this point, both teams maybe just playing out the final moments, hoping not to make a mistake. Now, our other semifinal tonight also went to overtime, and Westview paid the price for laying back a little bit too much, giving up a last gasp winner to the Christian High Patriots. So I don't think either of these teams wants to be too conservative to the point where you forget the play. Thumped forward, but really not within much purpose. Copper just knocking it up now. Bit of a push in the back, yes, and the referee did see that. And Country Day not in a big hurry to go forward. And you can tell that they're playing for penalties at this point. So the question is, who would have the advantage as we go to penalties, if indeed we're headed there? You'd think the uh, experience of Francis Parker might pay off there, but I tell you what, the inexperience of La Jolla Country Day has not hurt them one bit this evening. They have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the defending champions and really held their own. There is a goal kick. Each team will choose five shooters as we go to penalties uh, here in a moment. And both coaches have to be thinking about, okay, who are my shooters and how do I get them on the field? Now, here's an opportunity. Oh, boy. Geesey way out of her box to get to that. And there is the final whistle, signaling the end of overtime. So it's all tied at one, and we will decide this thing with penalties. We'll be right back after this break. So an interesting development here as we go to penalty kicks to decide the girls' CIF Division IV semifinal tonight between Francis Parker and La Jolla Country Day. Midfielder Crystal Liskevich is going to step into goal, and she will replace Sarah Swigart, the regular goalkeeper. And Kristen Kern, first up to shoot for the Francis Parker Lancers. And Kern knocks it into the lower corner, but Leskevich got a good hand to it. And that should serve as a warning to the rest of the Francis Parker shooters. Leskevich is a good goalkeeper. So Parker shoots first and takes the one nothing lead. I would have expected Kern to shoot it first, and she did, and she finished her chance. And now Hallie Houston, the talented freshman for the La Jolla Country Day, steps up. She'll face Adrian Giese. Giese on her line, bouncing back and forth. Wait for the whistle. Referee giving his last instructions to the goalkeeper, Houston waiting. Oh, and Giese with a diving save. Wow, what a huge save that was. So at the end of the first round, Francis Parker leads one to nothing. Alda Invice now steps up and walking, making that long walk from the center of the field up to the penalty spot. It's lonely up there. If you don't think so, just try it one of these days, folks. I'm telling you, this is pressure, and the pressure really is on the shooter. You've got to put the ball on goal. You can't miss the goal, and you've got to force the goalkeeper to make a good save. So Alda, with not much of a run up here, 
Looks and slots it home. Wow. Some of the best shooters in the world just take one step and bang it in, and that's what Alda Invice did. And now the Tories turn to send up their shooter, and it looks like the sweeper, Kelly Foltz. Kelly Foltz facing Adrian Giese. Oh, and she hit it over. Oh, my. Giese didn't have to make a save, and at the end of two rounds, it's two to nothing, Francis Parker. Well, I mentioned earlier, Parker does have some experience. They were right here in this same spot last Saturday against Santa Fe Christian, and they triumphed. And Hannah Rosen is about ready to take the third kick. Leskevich has gone the correct way both times so far, so she hasn't guessed wrong. Oh, top corner, nothing Leskevich could do about that. Rosen bangs it in. And you can tell these Parker players are prepared for this. Well, the co-captain Madison Elliott steps up and she is La Jolla Country Day's last chance here. She needs to make this to have the game continue. If she misses or Giese saves, it's all over. If she makes it, the Tories live to shoot another day. Giese makes the save off the post, and the Francis Barker Lancers are going back to the CIF finals, and Giese gets mobbed, and she ought to be, because the Parker team could not muster much of an attack tonight, but Giese was huge when she had to be. She made all the saves she needed to, and including two big ones here in penalties. Well, let's give credit to the La Jolla Country Day Tories. They did a marvelous job getting here. They came just short. They never lost to this Parker team, but Francis Parker is moving on to its 10th consecutive CIF championship final. 10 straight years in the finals and a rematch from last year as they're gonna take on the Patriots from Christian. That game will be this Saturday at La Jolla High. I'm Jeff Scott. You've been watching a George Langevin video production. Again, the final score from Escondido in the CIF Girls Division Four Soccer Semifinals. Francis Parker won La Jolla Country. Day one, Francis Parker wins on penalties and advances to the championship.